Chandelure is one of the coolest ghost type Pokemon. It hits insanely hard with its base 145 special attack, but other than that, it's kind of lacking a little bit, especially in the speed department. But there's one super interesting gimmick in getting around this, and that's with the move Inferno. Inferno is a 100 power fire move that has a 100% chance to burn the target. The problem is, this move has 50% accuracy. However, we can actually use this to our advantage with the blunder policy item. With this, if we miss an attack, our speed is doubled. It creates a fun dynamic where if Chandelure hits the Inferno, we get great damage along with a guaranteed burn. But if we most likely miss, we get Chandelure going mock speed. It's honestly just a goofy strategy, but it can actually put in some work, and Chandelure is pretty sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, we're using a cool Pokemon in an extra weird way. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It'll only take you a second. I promise you will not regret it. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the battle, because today's is a super good one. All right, so my opponent decides to lead off with the Metagross. Now, I'm working with this kind of dedicated lead Alolan Golem who has some fun tricks up his beard. So, I figure if it's a lead Metagross, it's probably just gonna go for Stealth Rock turn one. I decide to opt to get my own Stealth Rock up, and we're just kind of comparing sizes here. He goes for the Stealth Rock there. And at this point, you know, obviously this Golem has a bit of a gimmick in that it works really well against physical attackers exactly like this. Basically, it's built to be able to, you know, take an attack down to 1 HP with my sturdy ability, and then I can just knock them out with counter. So, I figure, you know, I look pretty appetizing to click Earthquake against. They are going to go for that. Knocks me down to the 1, sturdy endures it, and then I'm like, oh, actually? Uno reverse, bitch. I throw that counter at him. It is going to knock out uh, the Metagross, and unfortunately, it is actually carrying the Rocky Helmet. Now, the reason why that sucks is because I touch it, and then I lose my last HP, whereas yeah, I wasn't quite done yet. Ordinarily, I have my Custap Berry, to then be able to outspeed whatever comes in next and go for the explosion. So, doesn't quite work out there. However, I'm totally fine trading Golem, you know, for that Metagross thing is scary. So, we have a little empty switch here, which is always fun. I just decided to go into uh, the Pachirisu, as we're just staring directly in the face of a massive sea serpent. However, you know, this is totally fine for me. I'm just going to go for that nuzzle, get a para on literally whatever if they want to switch. They do actually end up switching here and they decide to go into the Gudra. So, honestly, this kind of support Pachirisu is actually kind of the tits, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually really fun. I can get a free para here with a nuzzle, and then especially against Pokemon like Gudra that are, you know, super uh, defensive, hard to whittle down, I'm actually also carrying the Super Fang. You know, I can get uh, exactly half damage off on this thing, and since they don't have much reliable recovery being, you know, a Gudra here, I can, it's nice to get that damage. Plus, you know, I figure the only thing this kills me with is probably like a Draco Meteor or something. I just decide to take a nice bite out of the thick thighs, get some solid chip there, as they end up going for the Acid Spray. So, that's gonna lower my special defense, and I definitely die to a next attack here. And since I've already got my Super Fang, I figure I could probably save the Pachirisu for later, and I just decide to go for the U-Turn here. Turns out, they're actually gonna end up going for a Terra, and not really sure what this thing wants to do. I imagine, you know, it's probably like just an ordinary Assault Vest Gudra. It's actually gonna go for the Terra Water, which, of course, looks a little bit weird staring at a Pachirisu, but of course, you know, most of the time, my only electric damage is gonna be, like, Nuzzle. So, you know, I go for that U-Turn. It actually does, you know, a little bit of damage there, because I'm the most powerful squirrel on the damn planet. And now I have to figure out who wants to come in on a freshly Terra Watered Fountain Gudra. I decide... You know, Tentacruel can come in, probably take any attack this thing wants to throw at me here. And uh, I'm floating in the air with my air balloon having a nice time. So it turns out they actually go for the Scald. And I kind of forget that Gudra even gets Scald. Now the bad news about this is that, of course, it does get the burn. You know, I take it nicely, but this is, in fact, a full Swords Dance physical sweeping Tentacruel. If you missed that video, definitely go watch that one. This Tentacruel is amazing. However... Being burnt is not a good time for my tentacle friend here, so I just decided to go for the knockoff there, you know, thinking maybe I can actually still grab a kill. I get rid of the Assault Vest, however, it does live, and then they actually don't quite finish me off with the Thunderbolt, but then, you know, the burn does it for him. So, the Terra Water for the extra Scald damage is actually kind of sweet for the Gudra, and uh, it did allow it to let the burn to pick me off, so... That is quite unfortunate, however, this now allows me a switch into whatever I like. Now, I see actually a pretty solid opening for Heracross to get a little bit of a sweep going. I'm working with, you know, pseudo-mega Heracross here with the loaded dice, and I am also working with the Trailblaze. So, I'm thinking initially, I'm just going to go for this Trailblaze, knock this thing out, and I, I'm not even going to lie to you, I immediately forgot about Sap Sipper. That 
was completely an oversight and I could say I predicted a switch there but hey I didn't I just clicked it and I was like oh shit yeah that thing uh do be sipping sap out here so luckily at least it does get fully paralyzed and at this point I can just finish it off with a pin missile and down goes the Gudra. So that's super nice to see that thing gone. It's just a defensive threat on the special side. And also, they, you know, used up their Terra. So no more crazy change in type shenanigans out here. And Heracross is actually looking pretty solid here after a Moxie boost. However, you know, without that Trailblaze speed boost, I'm not going to quite be able to, uh, you know, be able to outrun the threats that I want to. So they decide to bring in the Mag Mortar here. Now, of course, I do have the Rock Blast. However, I also have a really good opportunity to predict an easy flamethrower and then freely switch into my chandelier who is working with the flash fire. So I'm going to expect them to just go for that flamethrower here and in comes the absolute legend chandelier. So this thing comes in, I take some solid you know, stealth rock chip, but I come right in on a flamethrower, just ignites my candles even further. It gives us a little bit of extra damage on our fire move. So I am working with, of course, the inferno here. And this is actually a perfect position for me to click this because it forces a switch. I know they're probably gonna go into something like this Milotic as they do, and I really want this move to miss here. It's gonna basically, if I can miss this, I can get myself super fast. I do fortunately, which is hilarious to say, miss the Inferno. That then activates my blunder policy, and now basically the Chandelier go burr. I'm fast as hell at this point, get that plus two speed. And while ordinarily looking at this Milotic is not super ideal, I can, however, go ahead and commit my Terra Grass. And that's going to make me obviously resist the Surf that this, or Scald this thing can throw at me. But also gives me a stab for my Energy Ball, and uh, we are a well-positioned Chandelier at the moment. So I do go for that Terra Grass, got a nice little flower on my head, and honestly it's just super great that that Inferno missed. I honestly feel like there's a cheat code in that if you put a Blunder Policy on a Pokemon, and you want them to miss, they're just gonna hit their moves all the time. But we get lucky with the miss. That allows us to now fire off a Terra Grass Energy Ball. That's gonna finish off uh, the Milotic for sure. And uh, again, we're in a fantastic spot here with this thing because while they do have the fastest kitty in all of the land, we are absolutely going vroom and I should be faster than this thing regardless, unless it's Choice Scarf. So it turns out we do outspeed. A Flamethrower is gonna take care of the Meowscarada and we are going on an absolute blunder rampage out here. So. Now they're just going to go into Magmortar. So Magmortar has kind of a unique position here where obviously, you know, my grass type ass does not want to take a flamethrower, but, you know, we, uh, we do have that flash fire to cover for that. So it doesn't have anything super effective it could hit me with if somehow it was faster. But of course, we are blundered the hell out out here and a shadow ball finishes that thing off. So we are just running through the team at this point. And this is the exact reason why we wanted to get the speed. I can actually be faster. Uh, then the Iron Valiant and I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We ball. I'm going for another Inferno Hopefully we hit it this time and we do in fact miss as they actually just go for the spirit break gonna be their highest damage output here And we live it with 20 HP, which is actually amazing So it drops my special attack, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going for another Inferno. We're bound to hit eventually I do finally connect and uh, not only does it finish that thing off but Chandelier looks like an absolute boss out here so we both missed and hit uh, the Inferno. Unfortunately, we, it, it didn't live to see the 100% guaranteed burn, but uh, it's just cool to see finally Chandler able to pull off uh, some blunder policy stuff, and I thought that was just a really cool game. So if you've made it to the end of the battle and you're still listening to me talk, first of all, you're a real one, and second of all, I do have an announcement to make. So I have a lot of battles all the time to get you know videos like this, and uh, a lot of the time it results in matches that I don't necessarily feel like are worthy of a battle video of their own. But I've been stockpiling a lot of those and I do plan to upload them on my channel as members exclusive only content. So if you would like to, you can consider hitting that join button under the video. And for $4.99 a month, I will be uploading a few videos here and there of just kind of battles that I think are still cool, but don't quite make it to the full you know, videos. So, I mean, if you're interested in supporting the channel, obviously this is just something completely unnecessary if you don't want to, um, but I will have some extra content that'll only be viewable by members on there. So definitely consider it if you just want some more battles or would just like to support. Uh, and if not, that's totally cool too. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.